All right, moving right along in the cardiovascular system, we are on to, I shouldn't be so happy and thrilled, but we are on to diseases and disorders of the cardiovascular system in particular. So, and there are a lot more than I included in this presentation. These are just some to focus on. So we've talked about this one already, so this should be easy, bradycardia. Bradycardia is a slow heart rate. So remember, normal heart rate is 60 to 100 beats per minute. So bradycardia would be anything lower than 60 beats per minute. Tachycardia, remember, is fast heart rate. So anything above 100 beats per minute. And you can see in that EKG or ECG how close together those P, QRS and T waves are. Myocardial infarction is a heart attack. So that's a, a little bit of a hard word for heart attack. And what happens in a heart attack is coronary circulation gets blocked, usually a coronary artery. And what happens then is cardiac muscle tissue dies and that causes incredible pain, okay? So a myocardial infarction is a heart attack and it's caused from blockage in a coronary artery and causes muscle cell death. Angina pectoris, that's chest pain, okay? And it's due to decreased blood flow to the heart. So maybe there's not a blockage in the coronary artery, but it's narrowed, okay? So the heart muscle isn't getting enough oxygen, so it causes pain. Atherosclerosis, okay, this is caused by fatty deposits, which um, are often referred to as plaques, inside blood vessels. And you can see eventually it can lead to a complete occlusion or blockage of the artery. But even with this plaque right here um, in the middle, this one right here, so even with this one, you can see how narrow um, of a space there is left for blood to flow through, okay? And atherosclerosis it can be sped up by conditions like inactivity, smoking, stress, and a poor diet, okay? Now, the next term we're gonna look at is arteriosclerosis. Like, oh my goodness, why do these names have to be so similar, right? Well, Arteriosclerosis is caused by hardening, it's hardening and thickening of the arteries. It causes a decreased elasticity. And this happens naturally as we age, okay? It can be sped up by some things, but it does happen naturally. So here you can see atherosclerosis is these fatty plaque buildup, and arteriosclerosis is um, right here, which is a hardening and decreased elasticity of the arteries. So the heart has to pump a little harder um, in order to push it through um, in either case. So since these names are so similar, here is years ago, I had a student who told me this, so I'm gonna share it with you. This okay, looks like father, okay? And this particular student said, well, my father's fat, so that's how I remember. So if you can remember, this spells, if you put an F here, this spells father in the beginning. This is the kind that's caused from fatty buildup. And the arteriosclerosis is just the artery hardening. Congestive heart failure. That's when the heart muscle doesn't pump effectively. So unfortunately, fluid builds up in the lungs and the ventricle walls get thicker as the heart tries to pump faster and faster um, and more efficiently and more efficiently, um, but still is unable to. Fibrillation, okay? So fibrillation is rapid and irregular muscle contractions. We can have AFib or atrial fibrillation, which is that sawtooth pattern or we can have ventricular fib fibrillation or VFib, and that's those random weird EKG, and that is unable to sustain life. A heart murmur. A heart murmur is an abnormal sound created by swirling blood, blood moving in the wrong direction. So it's often due to a valve that doesn't work correctly. As you can see in these illustrations right here, 
you see how there's the valve is supposed to be nice and tight and closed like this one, but it's not. Okay. And so this is what a normal valve looks like when it's open. Here's what this one looks like, this um, defective valve. So you can see there would be some swirling sounds. All right, myocarditis, inflammation of the myocardium, which is the heart muscle. It can be caused sometimes by an infection somewhere else. It often happens with strep infections. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't mean every time you have a strep infection it happens, but when it does happen, it's often because of a strep infection. So it travels through the bloodstream and ends up um, causing an infection in the myocardium. So that's myocarditis. Pericarditis is an inflammation of the pericardium. Remember that double membrane sac with fluid that um, serves as some protection and a covering for the heart. We have stroke. A stroke is an interruption in blood supply to the brain, and it causes brain cell death. So remember, a heart attack, a myocardial infarction, caused um, death of heart muscle cells. Well, a stroke causes death of brain cells because it stops the flow of blood to the brain. And there are two types of strokes. There's ischemic and hemorrhagic. So in an ischemic stroke, a blood vessel is blocked by a clot. So a clot may have traveled to the brain and ends up causing a stroke. In a hemorrhagic stroke, it's less common, but it's caused by bleeding in the brain. So a blood vessel may have burst okay, and um, caused bleeding. We have tetralogy of Fallot. Okay? This is a very serious congenital birth defect, something you're born with. Um, babies are often blue or called cyanotic because the oxygen poor blood is um, pumped to the body instead of to the lungs. So there's some incorrect mixing going on and uh, this is called the blue baby syndrome and it's the focus of the movie something the lord made which is what we're watching in class we have varicose veins varicose veins are large bulging veins they can twist and cause pain and swelling and they are caused by damage to valves or vein walls very common as people get old Raynaud's syndrome. So you have these small arteries um, in your hands. Those arteries supply the um, blood to your fingers, also to your toes, in your feet, same thing. Well, the small arteries that supply blood to the skin constrict excessively in response to cold, limiting the blood supply. So the fingers can turn white and blue and then as they're rewarmed, would be very red. High blood pressure is hypertension, hyper high, hyper high. Okay, the heart has to pump harder, okay, to push things through the blood vessels. And these are some consequences or side effects of high blood pressure. And we have low blood pressure, which is hypotension. There's a type of hypotension called orthostatic hypotension. And that's when you, if you stand up real quickly, so say you're laying down peacefully asleep and you jump out of bed, you might feel dizzy or lightheaded. That's orthostatic hypotension. That's some um, feeling lightheaded due to a sudden change in position. So your blood pressure drops suddenly as you stood up so quickly. It could happen when you're sitting. It could happen more often when you're laying down and get up too quickly. Vasovagal syncope. That's losing consciousness due to a sudden drop in heart rate and blood pressure. It often happens with an overreaction to emotions, um, also overheating, dehydration, skipping meals. Uh, it happens to a lot of people at the sight of blood when it does happen. So see blood and all of a sudden they pass out. Their heart rate and blood pressure drop suddenly and they'll pass out. Okay. It also can happen um, to people who are very tall who stand up quickly. So remember that orthostatic hypotension, but because um, uh, they are taller, it can actually result in fainting. So the effects of calcium um, on your heart. So you have hypercalcemia, too much calcium. The contractions get too powerful, too prolonged. It can cause fainting. Hypocalcemia, too little calcium. The contractions are weak and may in fact stop. So why does this even matter, first of all? Well, calcium is one of those positive ions. So remember how we said the positive ions had to rush in and then out of the cell? 
Well, calcium is one of the ions involved in this process. The other ion involved is potassium. So again, effects on either one of those is going to affect heart contractions. So this is going to be pretty much the opposite. So hyperkalemia, too much potassium, so we can get weak contractions that may even stop. And hypokalemia, too little, so there's heart palpitations and an irregular rhythm. And there you have it. Some, again, remember there are so many more, but this is your focus, uh, diseases and disorders of the cardiovascular system.